the initial typical treatment is seizure medicines to address the seizures, although this is largely unsuccessful. Uh, most of us try using some form of immune therapy, either steroids or intravenous immunoglobulin, and some patients also may be uh, eligible for treatment using other um, immunomodulators. Uh, sometimes we'll use some forms of chemotherapy, although this is uh, pretty unusual uh, in most cases. Once a patient has been failed by one or two immune therapies, then we typically start a conversation about surgical hemispherectomy, which is basically disconnecting one hemisphere of the brain from the other one, and that also invariably involves some resection of the involved tissue as well. There are different types of surgical approaches, ranging from complete removal of uh, that the affected um, half of the brain to more limited resections uh, that involve a minimal amount of cortex that's removed, followed by disconnection of one hemisphere from the other. So we have a few studies um, going on at Johns Hopkins. Um, the first is a, um, outcomes and quality of life study that we're doing in conjunction with our colleagues at the Kennedy Krieger Institute, looking at long-term predictors of quality of life. We also have studies going on trying to unravel some of the immunopathogenesis of the study with Dr. Carlos Pardo, who's one of our neuropathologists. We're also a part of a multi-center consortium that's currently housed at uh, UCLA that's sponsored by the uh, Rasmussen Encephalitis Project.